Hello there, folks. Today we're taking a look at the game called Off the Rails. It's published by Rotten Games and the designer is Andrew Platt. And in this game you are goblins going to the mine and mining for gold and all the other different gems and trying to be the richest. So goblins love money. Let's take a look at how the game works. So Off the Rails is played over the course of several rounds until the chasm comes out. Then you will start putting down here those can tokens so basically the mine collapses it will expand and eventually when all the cards have been destroyed or have come out of the mine then the game will end and you will score points and you will score points based on what diamonds how many of them you have if we take a look at this basically the reference sheet and the player screen you can collect some of the points from those different diamonds but how the game works it's very simple. So these are the deposit cards and from them you will see where the crystals will appear. For example, two, two crystals at the two of red. So you can see those circles around here, those numbers. That means that this part over here is part number two for red. So two crystals will appear there if I pull out this card. And I grab those crystals from this bag, some random crystals. Whatever comes up will be there. So, that's that, but it's, it's a separate, basically, a phase of the game, generate deposits. But what you can do yourself on your turn, you can build the rail tracks, and then you can deploy your cart, and then you can move your cart, and of course collect the resources, collect those gems. So basically, you can do up to four actions on your turn. One of the actions is building. For example, I can do one, uh, let's say this the other one which are straight. One, two, three, I'm trying to find it. Two and three. And now you have built the track to those gems. And now for the fourth action, what you can also do, you can place a minecart. So the dice inside the minecarts mean that it's a speed of that minecart and it's an exact speed, which means this minecart goes for a speed of three, goes for three tiles. That also means that it cannot uh, go less tiles, or more tiles, of course. So you put it down here, so one of your actions. And then, when you do all your four actions, and also one of the actions you can do, you also can lower or increase the speed of card by one, because you need exact amount of speed, usually. When you have ended your turn, the, all your cards start moving. So I have one card, so it starts moving. Its speed is three, which means that it will move one, two, three. If it lands exactly on a spot with jewels, with gems, then you can collect two gems from that spot. If it will pass by the spot with the gems, let's say its speed was three, so I have to one, two, three, I have to right three, one, two, three from here, then I can collect only one gem. When I collect them, I put them in my cart over here. So they're kind of mine, but until I get a way out, until I build my way out and ride myself out from this mine, I cannot collect them behind my screen. So it's not, they're not safe really to score. Uh, so they're still in the cart, but one thing more is that there are black gems, if I can find them from this bag, yes I can. If you have those black gems, then you must collect them first before any other gems. And then you can choose what else you want to collect. So basically all it goes is just building up, then putting your cards out, and then basically all you want to do, you want to build the road back or if somebody else builds. So each player takes a turn and they, they will build their own side of the board and then eventually can choose or use the other player's tracks. One of the actions you can also do is you can upgrade the track. So you can upgrade one of those tracks into T-junction track, which is basically the turns. You have the usual turns as well. So these are the usual tracks. So you can, you can do, for example, I could have done this thing over here. Strategically, it's much more it's, it's much better because if I start going, I go one, two, three, and then because it turns on the left, I turn my card on the left and of course I will collect those gems as well. 
when I have the T junction, when I go, I can always choose if I turn left or right. Then I can also improve the T junction into the all way rail track where I can go straight forward and then I go left and right and so on. So, and as I told you, your mine cart goes exactly the speed you have uh, put it uh, off with. For example, here you have another mine cart. If it's a four, or let's say it's, it's a five, it must go exactly five tiles. If your speed is, uh, let's say three, but you can go only one, then you will basically be derailed and you go back and you lose your gems. So that's that. Also, sometimes things happen like, for example, if somebody else comes to you, let's say it, it was your turn, you ended up here. Now you have to move your minecart. You have to move three spaces, one, two, three. You collide. When you collide, if if some of the cards had none of these gems in their cards, then they all are totally derailed. If you had some gems in your card, so both of you, for example, both of you had, so then the opposing player must uh, discard some of the gems, half of the gems that they are, they have collected so far. So which means if I'm active, then that player must discard half of their gems. And then also, if you will collide front, then the opposing player must turn to the other side. If there is, of course, a T junction or the other, whatever, the, the, the all way rail track, then you can turn to the other side. Also, of course, if both of you collide front, then both of you will be turning the other side, which is sometimes very good because for example, in this way, I lost some of my gems and maybe I had some of the black gems and maybe I was lucky to lose black gems because you, you choose them randomly. Now I can go back and if I go back, it doesn't matter with which speed I go back because there is a stop sign over here. So I can go with any speed out of this board and then I will get those gem, gems into my stockpile over here. And that's basically how the game is played. Eventually when the Chasm card comes out, you will pull out those Chasm tokens and then you will put them on certain spots where here everything that is under the Chasm token will be destroyed so the mine collapses. And you will eventually during the game you'll put out more and more gems out so you can collect them. And you're trying to basically uh, maximize your action value over here. Also what you can play with, it's an optional, you can play with the mission cards. And this is the, basically the common objectives that if somebody gets to, gets to fulfill that objective, he can collect the card and get extra points. So red also gives you extra points if you have the most of the red gems and so on. So that's how off the rails is played. So first components and artwork. I'm I like the components of this game, this, the cards and that the dice represent the speed. Uh, they are small, they fit into those. So it's kind of a neat design of the components. The art overally, I mean, the box is, is, is really nice. I like the box. I like the, the overall component quality. The, card a little, the cards are a little bit um, maybe on a thin side, but you, you're not holding them. You're just using them to, to see what gems are com coming out. The gems are very clearly, very different colors. So it's totally fine. I am uh, i don't know what else to say, except one maybe thing is that the there's a lot of purple. Uh, and when you look at the board, eventually if, if you build up the board, you start playing, it doesn't really annoy you. But at first it really annoyed me that it's so much purple and it doesn't look great. If it would have been a little bit more colors, different colors, stuff like that. I know something different, uh, it would be better. But that's a minor thing, but still it bothers me too much purple in this game. Uh, so I give it four out of five for components and artwork. So the theme. Now, the theme is 
implemented well into the mechanics or mechanics are implemented well into the theme because um, you feel like you are mining because you're going to the mine you are setting up your cart you have the speed so the cart basically starts moving if you go through the tile you can grab only one gem if you end on a tile where there are gems you can grab two so basically yes if you stop you can grab more if you pass by you, you just run by you just need to grab something fast and that's really cool and when you're mining there are a lot of just coal or something like that which is useless resource of course you will get a lot of that unless everything else so everything feels somatic and you're building those rails and how they're bumping each into each other and how they turn around and so on I, I, I feel like I'm into into this um, whole thing over there so it all makes sense and rules wise as well of course the rules are easy to follow it all makes sense as well um, the objective cards, let them be. I don't know. It's 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 an easy uh, game, so there shouldn't be much of a theme. But yeah, I still I still feel like I'm mining for things, and then the chasm appears, and when the chasm appears, yes, the 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 mine starts collapsing, and you need to run away from the chasm and from the collision. So it it all feels great uh, with the theme. Uh, so I give it five out of five for the theme. Now the mechanics. There's one minor thing about uh, the same chasm, is that in the end I feel I felt like it would be maybe even greater if there would be even bigger rewards once the mine starts collapsing. So it gives you even better boost to go and push your luck, you know, uh, something extra. Uh, but instead of that, it's all the same. So trying to get out, yeah, trying to get as much as possible with uh, what is left on the board. But I would have liked to have like an extra boost. And now, when it's colliding, something totally new appears and then you can grab it as well and get many extra points. But it's a big risk for you. So that would be really cool. Maybe an expansion. Who knows? Uh, let's, let's see. Let's wait and see. But overly, yeah, everything works fine. I really like how the game... I mean, like, it's it's easy to follow. The turns are, are fast because you have four actions to spend. Mostly what you're doing, you're building the rail tracks and you're putting your card down. And then the next phase is your card moving and collecting gems, which is not your action. So basically, you already know, once, once the turn comes back to you, you already know that, oh, I'm going to build those three tracks and put this card down. Or I'm gonna build uh, those three, uh, the, those two tracks, and then I'm gonna decrease my speeds uh, by two or so on. So you already know what you're doing, and of course, if somebody grabs the gems that you wanted, then that's that. But still, the turns are really, really fast. The rules are simple. Everything works totally fine. Uh, one thing is also that at the beginning, it might feel like. At the beginning, I really like that at the beginning you're not really colliding with each other because you're starting to build up your rail tracks. But I like how eventually you will you will go towards because the, the, the deposit deck comes out to you and uh, it gives you all those gems on the board. And at some point, not only you, but the other player will also go towards the same gems as you want it. And there is a high possibility of collision and I like how it all works together that when you collide front side, then you turn around and sometimes you want to collide in order to turn around and then go out of that. So sometimes you have like, and I like how if you have gems, then you will lose half of the gems. But yeah, if you have those coal gems, the black gems, and you have the other gems, there's a risk, but still, I mean... I don't know. Um, you you can you can think about that if you have okay. I have um, two of the black gems. I have uh, the red and the green gem. So I'm going to distribute them between those uh, two hands. So the other player chooses what I discard. Okay. So I'm discard those. And if I'm lucky, I'm going to discard the coal gems. And then I will bump. Uh, but after bumping, I will turn around. And while going back, I can grab extra gems from the spots that I didn't grab uh, first I mean like uh, that I that I missed or something like that and then go out with even more gems so there's that a lot of strategy going on with how you do the collisions as well and when and so on 
and sometimes you want to get derailed so you, because you can start uh, from the start as well so yeah i i like the the whole flow of the game and the interaction it's not too nasty of interaction it's a funny interaction and once you get to the center more to the center once you build up more you have even more interaction so i totally dig the game i totally like all the mechanics in this game and that's five out of five for the mechanics replayability i mean it totally depends how the gems will come out and totally depends on what side you're gonna play on a blue or yellow or red whatever it is so there is the certain rule how you basically get get the sides and and yeah i'm uh, it's it's the the Customization, sorry, or the distribution of uh, gems is random, which means that every game is kind of different. It's all the same thing. You're building and you're going for that. Uh, but it's fast, it's easy. So I feel that there's a lot of replayability in this game. And then you have those objective cards that you can spice it up with. And yeah, eventually it's, it, yeah, it has a lot of replayability. So it's five out of five for replayability scale. Now I feel, as I told you, it's really cool when there is the crowd in the center. Well, once you build up, everyone goes towards the center even more and you start colliding and you have a lot of strategy and you know, funny interactions between each other. If you're playing with two players, uh, then there's less probability for that kind of interaction. So the more players, the better for this game. It still works. I mean, it can work for some people who don't like the kind of... Uh, I don't like that your turn is messed up because somebody collided into you and derailed you and so on. If you don't like that, if you don't like any kind of interaction, you can just play it with two and build your own rails and go your own way and whatever, maybe have a little bit of interaction. So it works totally fine with two, but it's better with three, even better with four. The more people, the, the merrier, the better. In my opinion, the more fun it is. So I'll give it... So for me, I would rather play with three or four and not play with two. So I give it four out of five for the scale. So uh, final scoring is 23 out of 25, which earns it a golden birth medal. As I told you, I, I like the whole implementation to the theme. Everything ma makes sense. That's the thing. It's not like it's a cool, adventurous, uh, big, big theme out there. But it, the, the, it, it all makes sense. How the cards work, how the collisions work, and so on. I really like that. I like the interaction uh, between the players, if there are more players. I like how simple it is, how fast it is, how kind of family-friendly it is. Minor things about the purple thing and so on, let it be. But overall, in my opinion, it's a great game. Uh, oh, but one thing about the components I didn't mention is that uh, why I subtracted uh, a total one point from there as well, is that because I feel li like the insert is, it's fine. It's not, un it's not unfunctional, but it's not completely functional. I feel like it could have been even better insert, but there's an insert, that's, uh, that's cool. And yeah, overall, everything works fine. It's not a biggest box. It kind of, I don't know, it has enough room in the box, it has um, enough game in the box of that size. So, yeah, I really recommend this game. So that's off the rails. And thank you for watching, we'll see you another time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, look at those channels as well. You can find all the links and accounts in the description below. And we'll see you another time. Bye-bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.